Yeah, I know we just did a module over finding the tension in a cable system. Um, and that's great if the cable system is given and the forces being applied to that system are given. But what if I have a system? We're just going to sketch this out really quickly. I'll let you guys do it. So we have a three, four slope that's attached to the ceiling at D, attached to the wall at C. This is B. This has come down to A, which is attached to the wall at E. And we have some unknown force, and this is at 60 degrees. Okay, so what if I have this cable system in place, and it was designed, and we hung a chandelier, and we're super, super happy with it, but it's time to remodel. And I don't want to change my, my structure, um, but what I want to calculate now is, well, if I want to take off the chandelier that I had, so here's my chandelier that's on there, and I know how much it weighed, I want to take it off and I want to replace it with something more modern. I would like to know how much could a chandelier weigh and my system still function the way that I've designed it to function. Um, and in this case, we're going to look at limiting cable. Okay, so if a cable can carry 500 newtons, that's our design. We used a cable that we bought from wherever. It can have 500 newtons of force in it before it has failure in terms of what we've decided failure is. It doesn't necessarily mean it breaks, but maybe there's some yielding, like it's stretching. So I'm going to have to figure out which cable limits my design so that I can figure just how heavy of a chandelier I can add to my system. So I'm going to start here at A because that's where my unknown is starting. And we're just going to call this F. It's our unknown force. And we have AE and we have AB. And again, I've drawn these and I'm showing tension, pulling, pulling, pulling. Those are all in tension. They're cables, so they're in tension. And I'm going to start with summing forces in the y direction because, again, this has an x and y component. This is x, but x doesn't help us. We don't have any relationship to this vertical force. So I have minus F plus the force in AB, but it's not all of the force, it's specifically this Y component. So if this is my theta, opposite, so opposite is sine. Sine 60 equals zero, okay? So then I can say, well, I need to know the relationship between AB and that applied force. So I'm gonna try to isolate AB, and AB equals F divided by sine 60. And I really don't want to write that all the time, so I'm just going to go ahead and find out what sine 60 is, find the inverse. And I have 1.5. Whoops. I have issues with numbers sometimes. 1.15 um, F. So if F were 100 pounds, the force that's actually in cable AB is 1.15 times that. So the force that's in cable AB is actually 115. OK, so it's it's actually the force here is larger than what we're applying. So I know that that's the ratio it's carrying. So now let's sum forces in the x direction. And we are going to have minus AB and in the x cosine cosine 60 plus AE equals zero. And I want to isolate that AE because I need to see its proportion. So we have AB, AB, cosine 60. Okay, I have to get another pencil. Sorry about that. Okay, so I have AB, cosine 60, and I've already found this relationship of AB with the force, so I can 1.15F, cosine 60, and if I multiply that out, so cosine 60 times, I get that AE equals 0.58F, okay? So this is carrying less than half of, or well, just over half of what that applied force is. So if I were looking at these two cables, if this were carrying, if this were 100 pounds, okay, if this were 100 pounds, 
then AE would be carrying about 58 pounds and AE, sorry, and AB would be carrying 115. So looking at this, we can see that cable AB would be limiting the value that we can, the capacity is limited by this cable AB, okay? So now that we know AB, which we got to be 1.15F, we can track that back up and look at joint B, okay? So I have joint B, and I know that this is 1.15F. That's my AB. Um, if this is 60 degrees, then this is also 60 degrees. This is probably like some geometry rule, like parallel axis, I don't even know, um, but 60 and 60. So we can go ahead and put that on here. Um, we have B to A. B to C, and then we have B to D, and this is at a three, four, five, okay? Um, and we know that A to B is 1.15 times F. So now we're gonna go through and, okay, X and Y, just X. So let's sum forces in the Y direction, okay? So we are gonna have three fifths BD minus 1.15F sine sine 60 equals zero. So I have three fifths BD equals 1.15F sine 60. So BD equals 1.15F sine 60 times 5 thirds. Well, that's a big giant mess, so let's simplify. Okay, so I have 1.15 times 60 sine times five divided by three. And I get that BD is 1.66 times F, okay? So that is a much larger um, ratio than what we had before, okay? So let's sum forces in the X direction and see what cable BC is carrying. Okay, so we can call this 1.66F. So we have a negative BC plus four fifths times 1.66F plus 1.15F X sine cosine 60. This has to equal zero. We're in statics again. So we're going to isolate BC equals, I'm going to move that over. And we're going to just start simplifying. 4 enter 5 divided by 1.66 times. So I get 1.328F plus 1.15 enter 60 cosine times 0.575F. If I add those together, BC equals 1.903F. Okay, so if we have a cable and the most it can carry is 500 newtons, that's the most it can carry, which of the cables in my system, okay, is carrying the most of the force? Well, we can see that BC is the one that limits. It is actually carrying 1.9 times F. So that means if F is 100 pounds, cable BC is actually carrying 190 pounds of force. Or I guess we were working with Newtons, but you get my point. If F was 100, BD is carrying 166. Okay, so let's just kind of look at that. If this is 100 pounds or 100 Newtons, then this was carrying 58. This is carrying 115. This is carrying 166. And this is carrying 166. 90. Okay, so which cable is carrying the most load of this 100 pound chandelier? We can clearly see it's BC. So we call BC, that is our limiting cable. That's the one we have to design for because it's carrying proportionally the largest amount of that load. 
So if BC equals 1.903F, and if BC can be no larger than 500 newtons in terms of the force it can carry, okay, I can now calculate that F is 500 newtons divided by 1.903. We're going to take the inverse times 500. That is not right. So we're going to take 500 divided by 1.903, and I get 262.7 newtons. Okay, so that would be the force created by a chandelier. Now, if I went in somewhere to look at weight, normally we would think about weight um, as kilograms. That's what we would weigh it as a kilogram. So I would have to, I mean, sorry for about this. I would have to say, well, how do I get from newtons to kilograms? And I divide out by that gravity. So be cautious when you're asking for um, weight or force that could be on here that you're finding the appropriate unit, okay? But this is how we could step through a system backwards to calculate what is the maximum load we could carry.